All right. Well, hey, thanks so much for having me on today. We're going to co condense a 90-minute presentation to 45 minutes, so I'm going to try to stay on track. We're going to cover some things very quickly. It's perfectly okay to, to have questions. We'll have a little bit of time to answer some questions at the end. But uh, to, to, to get right into the meat of it, we're going to talk today about my ETF tipping point trading system, which is a way to trade nine different major sectors, the Dow Jones, S&P 500, NASDAQ, the KB, oil, gold, uh, real estate, semiconductors, all that kind of stuff in a swing trade format. So here's an example of the output that, uh, that it spits out and kind of the trade decisions. This isn't you know, like yesterday or anything like that, but this just is uh, a recent time period to kind of show you a representative sample of exactly what it looks like. What we're looking for is we're looking for people who are interested in uh, swing trading, people that are interested in, in making you know, small incremental base hits, you know, kind of like major league trading was just talking about. The important thing in trading isn't that you have a home run trade or isn't that you have a series of home run trades. It's that you can afford and that you have the money in your account to make the next trade. So as a quick seg segue, why should you listen to me? Now, very frankly, I'm from a small dairy farming town, Preston, Idaho. If you ever saw the 2004 movie Napoleon Dynamite, that's my hometown. That's my cousins are actually extras in that movie. Um, but I did get lucky. I went to BYU and Provo, Utah, and right at the start of that internet boom, that little internet thing that we've all heard of now, right? I sold an internet startup company in 1998, and since then I've had the opportunity to consult and build internet business. I've actually traveled around the world working with multimillionaires. There's one of my uh, clients, Learjet, and there's us on the jet. Uh, flying down to LA to talk to them about uh, the, uh, buying internet businesses and and all the opportunities that were pre are present presented to us at the start of this whole internet boom, and I have traveled around the world speaking with multimillionaires, events in the UK, Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, Russia, Costa Rica. Uh, you know, I've been appeared in a couple of best-selling books. Actually, Poe Bronson's book is probably the most famous, the newest on the late shift, but. You know, if I'm anything like most of you who are on the call today, making the money isn't the problem. You know, most of you, most of my clients are dentists, CPAs, small business owners, so they have the cash flow coming in and they can make the money just fine in their whatever their chosen profession is. But every time I turn my money over to others and turn my investment dollars over to a, a quote unquote financial advisor, it bombed. And so, have you ever had that experience? But on the flip side, I have zero desire to day trade or be chained to my desk. I have a lot more things going on in my life than to, to sit at my desk all day. So I have really have two main interests, and if you're anything like me, uh, a gazillion side ones. My first main interest is, is travel. So the, you know, the countries in red are the countries I've been to so far, and the countries that aren't in red are the countries I would like to go to. So that's my one of my main hobbies. My other hobby is you know hanging out with my wife and kids. I have three kids. That picture's a little bit old now. That my oldest son on the left, he's actually now six nine. So <laughs> I guess I need to update that picture. But my whole goal is to generate way above market returns, have lots of compounding, and do this all in less than 15 minutes a week. So what are the results? Well, here's the box score. We've been running this system, this ETF tipping point system, which is an indicator that we created and developed. This cost us over $95,000. And we're actually uh, almost at 10 years. And so here's the results. In 116 months, uh, our monthly system results, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, we're averaging 3.4% per month Per, uh, per different sector. And so the, obviously if, if you know anything about compounding, if you know anything about uh, how, how these trades work, this isn't like buy and hold where we, where we bought the DIA uh, you know, 10 years ago and we just held it. We've bought and sold the DIA and the SPY and the Qs over a thousand times in this time period. And so the compounding effect is massive. So we take this 3%, which is our system, and then we turn that into massive results in, in compounding. So even without compounding, obviously you're talking 40% uh, return per year over the last 10 years. Now, if you add in compounding, it uh, gets a lot better. So what if starting on day one, January 2007, you'd put $10,000 into each of those nine different ETFs? Well, those $90,000 would have turned into over $3 million, $3 million with compounding. That's a 33 times increase. That's the power of 
compounding and having a positive expectation system. So a positive expectation is just, just simply a system that on average makes money. Uh, that on average, if you continue to use the system over time, uh, you're going to have more winning trades than losing trades or bigger wins than losses. So that's a 33 times increase in this particular system. But even if you're not a fan of, fan of compounding and just wanted to take your profits and run, that $90,000, if you withdrew all the profits uh, as, as, they, as the trades were uh, concluded, you would still turn into $407,180, which is still a four and a half times increase. So the box score, these are the nine different ETF sectors that we cover. But you know, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. What's an ETF and why should I care? So how many of you on the call are familiar with what an ETF is? If you can go ahead and type that in the questions box and let me see if I can get my questions thing open here without um, giving my presentation to, to slow, slow down. Okay, so everybody's familiar with an ETF is. So the, the, the basic answer is a, ba a basic ETF is an artificial index created to exactly mimic an underlying basket of stocks with a lot, a lot of changing what's going on. So most people are familiar, even in the mass market, are familiar with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So here's a chart showing the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And if I click to the next screen, you, you can see that the picture is almost identical. The only difference is one is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is a non-tradable uh, index, right? You can't go to your broker and say, give me 100 shares of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Well, what they'd actually sell you is the DIA, which is the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF. But if you notice the ups and downs, uh, the daily uh, candles look, look almost identical. And why should we trade ETFs? Why should we trade ETFs as opposed to futures, uh, stocks, uh, Forex, Nadex, options, uh, or, or any of those other, uh, other possibilities out there? For, for disclosure, we, I'm an, uh, a specialist in options and ETFs. So ETFs, the, the huge advantage is, is if an ETF is big enough to generate much interest, it has options on it, and the options uh, are plentiful and in, in huge demand. So why ETFs? First off, ETFs have lower expenses, they have tax efficiency, they have financial flexibility, they have offer consistent market performance, you're not going to have crazy price movements uh, like you are with stocks, and they have mass appeal. So here's how we generate uh, the signals on uh, these ETFs. So by definition, this is my definition of technical analysis, is 50 years of traders arguing about stuff that works sometimes. If any of you have ever been around technical analysis, you know what I'm talking about. Well, in fact, why don't you just go to Amazon and just say, well, let, let me get the premier treatise and you know the summary of what technical analysis is, is all about. So if you type in technical analysis on Amazon, yeah, well, it only comes up with 50,812 results. So here's my controversial statement. The most famous technical analysis and what most of them are based on is moving averages. And my controversial statement is moving averages suck. Uh, Larry Williams has filled at least three books with 60 or so oscillators for trading. Now, shouldn't there just be one by now? The answer is when we're dealing with technical analysis and technical study, uh, that by itself is not going to do it. We all have the, the same three basic elements, and those are price, time, and volume. And if you think about it, which of those are the most analyzed and uh, the most picked over? And which of them is the least studied and the least picked over, right? Well, everyone scrambles to put their name on a proprietary indicator to manipulate the results in a slightly different fashion. The basic failure of all of these is that they all use moving averages, even if you're talking about uh, MACD, stochastics, wildest parabolics, a root even a newbie knows that moving averages are gotcha. If you're too short on your moving averages, you get whipsawed. If they're too long, you get left in the dust. So the pro problem isn't that moving averages don't work, is they don't they don't work all the time. Uh, you know, for example, what about when markets are flat? Markets are flat 40% of the time. A moving average is going to do you absolutely no good. So for the past 15 years that I've been trading, I've been trading over 15 years. I think my I'm actually my first brokerage account was an E-Trade account nearly 20 years ago. I think, I think we're approaching 20 years, 1996 I think was the, the first year. So I've avoided moving averages like the plague just for that reason. Sure, I still look at stochastics every once in a while, my secret sauce of 533, uh, but only when I'm looking for confirmation. I don't even use candlesticks anymore, even though I study them very intensely for over a year. 
I'm trying to look for areas that are not being monitored by other folks because that's what, for me, makes all the difference. I don't want to run with the pack because the pack is invariably wrong. So remember that controversial statement, moving averages suck. So what do we do? What, what am I looking for? How am I coming up with these trades? How am I de deciding when to enter and exit an ED ETF? Well, first off, I'm going to say that you should only trade something that has options available on it. Uh, it's a proven fact that uh, any vehicle that has options available on it is going to have much more liquidity, much more volume, going to be much more stable than a non-optionable stock, option ETF, or whatever else you're trading. Optional stocks have an average of 2.2 million shares per day and non-optional just 119,000. So number one, it's got to have options available on it, regardless of if you trade the options or not. Number two, uh, we're going to uh, delineate between whether we use ETFs that are price weighted, market cap weighted, or equally weighted. And in my opinion, and this is this is a whole conversation that could go, frankly, <laughs> another 20 minutes just on this this topic. But in my opinion, the only sensible way to treat this is equally weighted. We're looking for a sector move uh, and uh, spread out across all the stocks. So if we're looking at the S&P 500, for every stock that has a one 500th weight whether it's priced at $4 or $400. If you know anything about ETFs, you know that some are price weighted, some are market cap weighted. And we want to avoid all that trouble, so we equally weight every ETF. So then what we do is we look at what we call the on-balance volume. Now, I did not invent on-balance volume. What I did invent is the ETF tipping point, which is a granularization, which is an improvement uh, using the massive amount of data that we now have available to us that wasn't available when on balance volume, the original indicator came out. So that's easier said than done. Joe Granville is the original father of on balance volume, and he introduced it in a book that goes all the way back to 1963, The New Key to Stock Market Profits. This is the first and most popular indicator to measure positive and negative volume flow. So the concept behind the indicator is very simple. This is the three word phrase that has literally made me millions in trading profits, which is volume precedes price. Volume precedes price. What does that mean? Well, it simply means um, that a massive change in volume always uh, precipitates a change in price, whether positive or negative. So to get back to the simple explanation, OVV is a simple indicator that adds a period's volume when it closes up and subtracts the period's volume when it closes down. The cumulative total of the volume additions and subtractions forms the OVV line. So, of course, uh, if today's closing price is greater than yesterday's closing price, then the new OBV would be yesterday's OBV plus today's. And conversely, if the closing price is less, uh, the new OBV is yesterday's OBV minus today's volume. So it's a very simple indicator. But granted, this came out in 1963. So let's think of what kind of improvements in stock trading have happened since 1963. Well, the whole thing's changed, right? <laughs> <laughs> in 1963, how did they get their, their daily prices? Well, there was some, you know, there was a ticker tape uh, sort of mechanism, right? Um, and there was, there was published uh, charts that came in chart books. If you wanted to look at the price of GE or AT&T, well, they mailed you a book that showed, well, here's the, the open and close of prices of, of that over the last 36 months or something to that effect. Uh, since 1963, we've had a massive increase in not only the demand for these financial products, uh, the invention of all these new exchanges, the invention of, of new things like ET ETFs, but there's a massive, uh, massively amount, of, uh, a huge more amount of uh, data that has never existed. So what we're doing is the OBV simply looked at well, what happened uh, to the volume on a daily basis. But what we decided to do is we're going to look at every single stock that makes up the ETF. And so that means for the S&P 500, we keep a running total throughout the day as to whether there's more buying or selling going on on every single trade, tick by tick. So yes, we look at, for something like the S&P 500, 500 different companies. We capture the data on a running total transaction that happens on all 500 companies inside the S&P 500. So the question is, is there more buying pressure or more selling pressure? So how would we be able to tell that? How would we be able to tell whether there's more buying pressure or selling pressure? Any, anybody have any idea? Go ahead and type in the questions box if you've got a quick answer for that. How are we gonna tell? Well, the quick question is, how are we gonna tell? 
quite simply, we evaluate the bid price and the ask price of the trade. And if the sale went off closer to the ask price, then the sellers were willing to hold out for a higher price and buyers were willing to pay extra for to ensure that they got those shares. Conversely, if the sale went off the bid price, then it was the sellers who were willing to move their prices down toward the buyers and who were in control, able to force the hand of the sellers to reduce their price. So that then establishes either a positive or negative tick volume, which like Joe Granville's original idea, allows us to set up with much greater confidence a measure of who's the power with, with the buyers or the sellers. Now at the end of a day we, that we look at a, a losing day, but we know that on balance it was actually bullish or a bearish move for the majority of the stock. At that point we simply do a cumulative summation for the next 13 sessions. At the end of that time we now have a pretty good idea of what percentage of stocks are advancing on hidden power or, or failing despite rising prices. So at the end of the day, we know out of the 500 stocks in the S&P 500, how many are actually on positive footing, how many have negative stance. So that's why we call it the ETF tipping point because uh, quite frequently you'll see a, a stock trade sideways for an, an, uh, a period of time, but the on balance volume or the ETF tipping point inside of it is slowly moving, moving bullish or bearish. All of a sudden when it flips over from more than 50% bullish or more than 50% bearish, the price catches up and all of a sudden you're going to have gaps in the price and the price is going to move with our trade. So notice that this is all done without the use of moving averages. And I don't need to emphasize it again, but uh, moving averages suck. This does, doesn't have anything to do with a single moving average. But seeing as how we've been collecting the information over the prior 13 trading days, we know where each company within the ETF sits in terms of positive or negative trend. So then when it switches from positive to negative, you know, this isn't just a buy and hold system or just a go long system. We uh, actively short uh, these ETFs and go bearish. We then have a sell signal for that ETF and vice versa. So let's walk through the whole process. Uh, this is the system. I've spent $95,000 programming this, getting it in a concise format to do exactly what I just said. We analyze every trade tick by tick on the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ tech index, the oil index, the semiconductors index, uh, let's see, the real estate index, I'm losing, leaving one out, oh, the gold index. So, uh, well, and the financial banking index, I believe that's the name. So let's walk through this whole process. At this point, I'm going to assume that you've decided to forego the collection of your own tick by tick collection platform and you're going to use our signals. If not, feel free. Um, you know, it did cost us $95,000, lots of sleepless nights to get this right, to get the correct data uh, in a timely fashion and to be able to analyze it like this. But the results have been nothing less than, uh, than life-changing for us. So what we do is we publish these signals that come out uh, every day at 12.30 p.m. Pacific or 3.30 p.m. Eastern. We, we send it to you by text and email service to make it hands-off for you. You can trade the next morning if you can't see it or trade during the day, but you'll lose some of the advantage of, of the returns. We also uh, show you exactly how to buy or short the ETF or buy calls or puts on the ETF or buy the double ETF or the double inverse ETF or calls or puts on the doubles. So when we've show, been showing the trade results, we're only showing the results of trading the single ETF, 3.4% trading the singles. Of course, we are also going to provide for you uh, the list of, if you want to trade the double ETFs, the results are going to be roughly, it's not exactly double, but the results are going to be roughly two times that 3.4 percent or, you know, factors uh, above that if you tra trade the puts or calls on either single ETFs or the puts or calls on the double ETF. And then we simply hold those positions until we receive a signal to reverse or until we're stopped out. The average is about 21 days in length. So this is a swing trading system. On a daily basis, uh, there's not much to do. Uh, you know, an average month, we're talking uh, four, to, four, to, four to six signals in an average month. Right now, right now we're actually kind of been, um, we're very bearish on, uh, well, we're, when I say we, the system is bearish on the majority of our signals and the markets continue to uh, inch a little bit higher. So hopefully those will turn around and uh, uh, turn those into to nice to nice bearish trades. So you could be in a cash position if your trade gets stopped out. In that case, you just wait for the next signal and re-enter the market. An ETF is either going to be bullish or bearish. If you're only comfortable playing to the upside, then you can just trade with bullish and go to cash for that ETF when they're bearish. Every day around 12.30 p.m. Pacific or 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 
we send out alerts, and that's where we believe the signals will be for the next day. We, you can also get this sent to you by email and text, text, text message. So here's an example from a recent day, what exactly the trade charts look like. Uh, you can see on the DIA, we're bearish, the SPY were bearish, the Qs were bearish, the financial index were bearish, uh, oil were bearish. Then we have one bullish, which is gold, which makes sense. Gold is usually uh, the inverse of what the others are. Uh, semiconductors is bearish, real estate is bullish, materials is bullish. And you can kind of see the length of trades. Some of those trades were on 20 days, 4 days, 80 days, and then the, the gain or loss on those particular trades. And then we do it again a couple hundred more times, <laughs> right? So, so far with this system, in the past 10 years, we've uh, generated over 1,024 trades. So one thing that you may have noticed in the far right-hand column, we also give you the columns for the options. So if you want to uh, spice up your returns a little bit more, if you have a, a higher appetite for risk, we do provide the specific option uh, put in call to trade uh, that's designed according to the way that we like to trade options. So we've gone a lot of, to a lot of trouble to find the best option for you using our proprietary engine. And our preferred method of trading the system overall is to trade the options on the double ETFs. While the two times ETFs don't always outperform, don't perform double the single ETF, they do generally perform better. And the same thing follows through with the options. There are a number of other strategies we're exploring. And once we have the hard data on those, I'll share them with you. For those who are really digging into the nuts and bolts, you know, options, constructions, uh, spreads, and, and, and the like. But for now, let's just keep it simple and make it some money. So uh, have to include this just to make sure that we're on the right uh, track. For those of you not traded options before, some words of caution and encouragement. Done properly, I believe that options actually carry less risk than the underlying stock. There are dozens of options courses that can take you, that you can run from anywhere from $1,500 to $7,500 that basically teach you the same thing, how to lose your money uh, less slowly. In options, we want to hit go for base hits. That's one thing that you're going to hear from us time and time again is we're not swinging for the fences. We want to be in this game where in options, 93% of losers uh, uh, lose money trading options and stop trading. The 7% of traders are keeping all the money, and that's where we want to be. So what goes wrong when people buy options? Well, quite simply, initially everyone is obsessed with a fair value of the option as it approaches expiration. You're taught to look for cheap, mispriced options that will hopefully double their money in the last three weeks. Put down for you know 10 contracts on Acme Rubber and there's out of the money with three, three weeks to run at 35 cents each. That equates to $350 to con control the equivalent of 1,000 shares of stock. Three weeks go by and something crazy happens and uh, the market moves in your favor and all of a sudden those mispriced options now worth 70 cents on expiration day. You doubled your money. Now you kick yourself that you didn't buy $7,500 or $10,000 worth. Well, the only problem is, is that's most likely going to be the last time you're lucky enough or talented enough to pick a winner. And just like first-time Vegas gamblers, you will never win again. I couldn't care less if an option is mispriced. I don't care. I don't want to hold it to expiration. I only want to rent it for a while and want to sell it to somebody else so they can hold it to expiration. We buy options in this system that are at least four to six months away from expiration. We will never hold it closer than one month to expiration. We do this if we, even if we only expect to be in the trade for a month. But by doing this, we're renting the stock. We're essentially renting the stock by buying options this way, and we're just using the options as a proxy for the stock to get to the gains without the obligation. My risk is totally limited to my investment. Typically, for you options guys, we're buying options four to six months out with a delta of about 70 to 75, which quite simply means when the trade goes in our favor, uh, two or three more strikes, right? If we get in the trade, we buy an option with a delta of 70 to 75. And then the, uh, the trade goes in our, in, in our favor, all of a sudden that delta goes up to 90, 95, 100, and all of a sudden we just simply have a proxy for the ETF without the expense. So skip over some of this. You know, most people look at daily options fluctuations, get strange beasts crawling around the pit of their stomach. That's perfectly understandable. You do have to calculate your options uh, investments on the fraction you have invested uh, as opposed to the total amount that you had to put up, right? Do not overinvest in options. So we've mentioned uh, four different ways that you can trade these ETF tipping point signals. You're talking the single ETF, which is our baseline, that's returned 3.4% per month per sector for over 10 years, 
right? Then, of course, there's the double ETFs. There's the options on the ETF. There's the options of the double ETF. And kind of uh, saving some of the, the creme de, de la creme for the last is the best in class buying. So let's say that we get a signal to buy from the gold, uh, the gold index, HUI. We know that there are 15 stocks within this basket. And so this allows us to spread the risk around the 15 stocks so we can't get into too much trouble. The problem when we buy any ETF, even the smaller ETFs like this HUI that only has 15 stocks in there, is that we buy into the mediocrity of the index as well as the hot performers. So what we do is we're trying to find out of that particular uh, basket of uh, that's inside that ETF, which ones are really responsible for the gains. For example, back in November of 2007, the NASDAQ tech index was up 26% for the year, but 76% of that gain in that 100 stock index were from just four stocks, Apple, Google, Amazon, and Research in Motion. That means if you bought the Qs, you had at least three-fourths of the stocks that were underperforming and pulling down the performance. So our question is, well, how do we find those? Well, this is how we find it. We click in, inside our membership area. We show you which are the high-performing, which are the dogs inside an individual ETF. So this is on the DIA. On this particular day, uh, the DIA uh, how, had a relative uh, gain, was, was going up about 1.4%. Uh, that was his performance rate ranking and relative gain. But uh, the top three were Alcoa, Chevron, and Boeing. You can see them at the very top of the list with a relative gain of 8.8, 5.8, 5.2. .8, and at the bottom was Hewlett Packard, JP Morgan, and United Health Group. Right? So what we do is if we if we received a bullish signal in the DIA, uh, one of the ways to trade it would be to just buy the options on those high flying stocks. In this, in this case, the Alcoa, the Chevron, and the Boeing. So, of course, we're going to be talking about options, and we're going to show you, uh, we, we generate those options for you and show you exactly which options to buy on Alcoa, on Chevron, and Boeing. We still advocate buying more than just one, just in, no matter what sector you're in, in case, you know, there are occasional slip up of the leader, and you don't put all of your eggs in one basket, and you don't want to lose all those, those eggs, particularly if you play options play the option, but if even just one of your three slips, the others will usually pick up the slack with even better performance. So how are these stocks ranked, you say? Well, we look over the last 10, 15, 20, and 30 days, we weight the gains of each of those ranges with the heaviest weighting for the last 10 days, then have the gains for each successive period. Add them all together and then rank each stock against its own index. So you can see which stocks are outperforming their own index. It's as simple as that you'll generally see about 15% better gains using the best-in-class stock as opposed to simply buying the ETF. So this system is normally too volatile to chase, and there's not any time to wait for confirmation. You notice in our closed trade list that there are quite a few trades that only last one to four days. Right now, as we're, we're in an across-the-board advance, which is market-driven, not sector, uh, without doing, you know, the it's the, the, the trades happen fast. So we're going to have to... Uh, when we see a trade executed, we're going to have to enter that trade. So, of course, the usual legal stuff our attorneys make us say, financial markets, financial markets are risky, investing is risky, past performance does not guarantee future performance. Who might be interested? This is, this, is what we, this is what we offer. We have thousands of students around the globe. Like we've said, we've been doing this. This is our 10th year of, of selling this exact system in this exact format. The box score, again, from 11-1-2007 to through the end of last month through 8 31 16. Uh, you can see that, uh, you know, you can see the drawdown, you can see the percentage per month. The highest flying one was gold. We've made an average of 8.63% per month trading the gold sector. Um, and even the lowest one is the SPY at 1.78% per month, times that by 12, get some compounding thrown in there. Uh, some pretty stellar returns. The, the average monthly system returns, of course, is 3.41%. The largest drawdown was on the Qs, a 22% drawdown. Uh, but some of them, like the gold ones, had a 1.7% drawdown. Uh, pretty crazy. So here's here's representative of uh, what you get on a daily basis from us. This is the trade chart. Uh, uh, shows you what trades that we're currently in. And most days, there's not a change to make. There's not a trade. So anybody have any idea of what this is on the screen? Got a couple more seconds. What am I showing on the screen right there? 
Well, quite simply, that's a hill of beans. Uh, and that's what this amounts to if you don't take action on this. Uh, you know, I was, was, was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth, did not go to private school. Like I mentioned, I grew up in Preston, Idaho on a dairy farm. Uh, here's my offer to coach 25 of you. Uh, there's well over 100 people on the call today. Uh, here's my offer to coach 25 of you if you're interested. The program options are pretty simple. We sell this system for $997 for six months access or $2,997 for three years access. That's a 50% discount. So we're targeting uh, you know, towards people with larger trading accounts. We're tar targeting towards people who are in this for the long haul. It's people who can give it at least six months of their time uh, to get into this system, place the trades, and reap those those benefits. Quite simply, I hate overhead. I could get some fancy marketing and hire some full-time sales guys, um, but that's just not me. Here's here's a shot of my office, and I'm actually sitting in that very office right now. You can see the sign out front, trading science, and uh, I'm up there on the second floor. So we're here for the long run. Uh, you know, we're not a fly-by-night sort of company. We've been doing this a long period of time. Uh, we try to develop and invent and systematize trading processes that are going to work for the long run, things that are going to work in any market condition, up or down or sideways. Uh, you know, and if you're ever, ever in, the, in the neighborhood, 122 North Raymond, suite number one in Spokane Valley. And so for people who are not familiar with where Spokane, Washington is at, uh, it's not exactly a famous town uh, other than for Gonzaga basketball and a few other things like that. We're just 10 miles from the Idaho-Washington border, from the resort town of Coeur d'Alene, uh, Idaho, and about five hours or four hours east of Seattle. So instead of dealing with big wigs, hedge fund managers, I'd rather enjoy my free time, deal with just a few customers. Uh, if we had more time, we'd, we'd uh, play some of these clips that we have of, of, of uh, for example, this uh, Dean Hamill, one of my students. He talks about how uh, he looked for a trading system for years that uh, would be a, in the swing trading format, not day trading, not anything uh, crazy risky, and something that he could uh, work on in his spare time. And that's exactly what he's been able to, to get with this ETF tipping point. So, of course, I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is on this and take the majority of the risk by giving you an ironclad two-part performance guarantee. The guarantee is very simple. Part one, go through the entire trading, start trading live, and if you don't love it, get a complete refund anytime within 30 days of ordering, no questions asked. You know, and that's pretty standard. Um, I can't believe that anybody would actually ever sell anything without a full money back guarantee. Uh, and so we start with, with that as just the baseline. Try the system out. If you don't love it, get a, you know, no questions asked, money, money back guarantee within the first 30 days of ordering. Part two, Learn the system and use it for a full six months. Ride along with me, take the trades as they come up, execute all the trades that they come, up, that they come up, and if you don't at least make back your system investment, $997 for the six month option, I'll personally work with you for free until you do. So frankly, either way, you love it and make good money with it, or you hate it and you get your money back. I don't think we can be much more fair than that. So here's another uh, testimonial from uh, one of my students, John Lilly. Uh, talks about some of the returns that, that, that he's uh, currently experiencing. We're a little cramped for time, so we're going to skip over some of that. But needless to say, this is just one of hundreds of these kinds of videos that we have from happy students all around the, all, all around the globe. So I'm going to give you a, a couple bonuses for the first 25 people to sign up today. Number one, we're going to make a donation in your name to Kiva.org. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Kiva helps entrepreneurs in third world countries, something I'm really passionate about. I'm an entrepreneur. I like helping entrepreneurs. So every time we make a sale in this company, we make a donation in our uh, client's name to help an entrepreneur in the third world get uh, a small business off the ground. Number two, you're going to get a two-day live workshop in Spokane, Washington in the fall of 2016. Uh, here's how you claim one of the 25 spots. You can either call our secure encrypted voicemail line at 509 720-7867 and leave a detailed message with your full name and address, phone, email, and credit card number, along with the choice of which of the two packages you like, either the 997 or the 2997. We'll return your call ASAP to confirm and process your order and answer any or you can order online by going to etftippingpoint.com slash six month or etftippingpoint.com slash three year. So here's a couple of the people that we've helped with uh, 
with clients over the years, uh, help them get into small business of their own, like we talked about through the donation through Kiva.org. Uh, here's a shot of our most recent workshop here here in Spokane. It's held in the the unbelievably uh, luxurious Davenport Hotel here in Spokane, Washington, and the one this fall will be here, held there as well. And again, to claim one of the 25 spots, you need to call 509 720 7867, leave a detailed message, or you can order online at etftippingpoint.com slash six month or etftippingpoint.com slash three year. So I'm going to go ahead and just summarize it. What we're looking for is students who want way above market returns, lots of compounding, and less than 15 minutes a week. So I, my time's about spent, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up for any questions that we have. If you have some questions, the, type them in the question box now um, I see all the, the, the yeses and things like that from from before so let me kind of uh, cancel those out and again uh, what we're looking for is people who want above market returns the ability to get lots of compounding in place trade ETFs on a swing trading basis and <coughs> excuse me do this all in less than 15 minutes a week so thanks everyone so much for being on uh, I think that about wraps it up from my presentation. Again, this is the system that we're talking about. The results are right there in our box score. Uh, you know, you'd be hard pressed to find any system that's been running for 10 years that has uh, results like that. 3.41% per sector per month. So thanks everyone. Thanks for being here. And uh, we'll turn the time back over to the organizers and presenters for the next speaker.